this video, we're talking about the fascinating problem, mass case order list. This challenge tests your understanding of data structures and algorithms, specifically focus on the practice use. Our goal is to merge case order linked list into a single sorted linked list. Sounds complex, right? Don't worry, I'll get you a simple and straightforward approach using Python's practice queue. So, let's dive in. So here, you're given an array of k linked lists, list, which is called list here, and then each linked list is sorted in ascending order. We need to merge all linked lists into one sorted linked list and return it. So here, given example is, we have these three lists. So each of these lists are sorted in ascending order, and then we have to form a single linked list, which is sorted in ascending order by combining all these lists. So here, by merging them into one sorted list, we're getting like this one. We're getting one from this and one from this. So here, two ones here, and then uh, remaining all similarly. Here, second is the empty list. So we output empty. Similarly here also. And then here the constraints given are k is equals to list dot length and then k is in the inclusive range of 0 to n power 4 and here each single list is length lies in the inclusive range of 0 to 500 and each list element lies in the range of minus 10 power to 10 power 4 and here the list each list is sorted in ascending order and also the sum of each list length will not exceed 10 power 4. So let's look into the solutions. So our approach is very simple. We're going to use Pratiq. So the concept is we leverage Pratiq to keep track of smallest elements across all lists at any given point of time. Pratiq automatically orders elements by their value. So it ensures that we always have access to the smallest item with the minimal effort. So let's go to the algorithm we have. So first we're going to initialize the dummy pointer for our this is a resulting linked list and pointer named current to help us append nodes to the list. So the second is we create an instance of the Pratt queue. This will hold our nodes ordered by the value. And the third is uh, we just iterate over the input list. And then for each list, if it's not empty, we just insert this first node into the Pratt queue. So the queue sorts this by their value. So the next step is we we trade over the Pratt queue until it's empty and then we extract at each iteration we extract the smallest node from the queue and then we append the node's value to our result and then we move the pointer from the extracted node to its next node so if the next node exists we add, add it back to the queue for the future processing so once the queue is empty all nodes have been processed and appended in their order so this results in the merge sorted list so let's go over the code explanation so here i have the code ready so i'll explain it step by step don't worry if you haven't got the algorithm so here this is the given example where we have the three lists so here what we are doing is we are in initializing the practice queue here and then we are initializing the dummy pointer and the current pointer this is just to hold a reference for our uh, form linked list so here what we are doing is for the uh, we are just enumerating to the list and then getting the list index and the node this is just enumerate function in python if this node exists i mean it's not null we just put into the queue we are putting the nodes value on the list index and node so why we are putting this list index even though it's like we are interested in node value and node we are putting this list index because this list index is actually is required to avoid the conflicts within the like let's say we are putting the uh, tuples right so the first tuple is going to be in the prior to is like for 1 and 0, 0 for this 0th index and then next is a linked list node in this one. So the next is like next tuple is 1 and the index is 1 here and the next is linked list node and then we will pick from the, this one. So here the next tuple is going to be the 2 and the index is 2 and the next is the linked list. So here if the first two elements of the two tuples are equal then python would try to compare the second elements of the tuples to determine their order so if this second elements of the objects then that do not support the comparison we'll get the error like type error saying that less than operator no instance between the linked list list node actually here less than operator between the linked list node is not supported because they haven't implemented the link, uh, less than operator and greater than operator here right so here the comparison is not supported for the custom objects so and then it would give a type error so that's why to eradicate that error we're gonna be using this one with a list index so like if two values are the same based on this list index this is gonna be sorted in the practice queue 
So yeah, and then what we're doing is while the queue is not empty, we're just gonna doing this tuple unpacking step here. What we do like when you do queue.get, we'll be getting the node value and then list index and the node. So we are uh, incrementing the current dot next. We are pointing the current dot next to node, which which is the node here. So basically we are just pointing to this node because this has the just like we're giving the reference to the node here. And then we are incrementing the current node position to current dot next. This is for the next iteration to come because we can't keep it the same step, right? Because we already have the node here and we have to assign it to the other node in the next iteration. That's why we have to keep it ready for the next iteration and making it current is equal to current dot next. And here we are just doing node is equal to node dot next because like we are just having the same, the first node of each linked list, right? If this node is not null, we just append it to the priority queue. That's what this step means. So it's like we get the one here and then we're doing one dot next and we have the node value which is four and then we're keeping this list index and then the node itself so we repeat this process until the queue gets empty and then at the end we return the dummy dot next which would point to the head because dummy is like we point to the dummy node right so dummy dot next would be the head of the newly formed linked list hope you got overall idea of it so here the complexities so the first is time complexity. So the first step is inserting an element in the priority queue. So it's gonna take O of log K because it's a min heap implementation. Here K is the number of linked list. And then the priority queue maintains the heap structure with utmost K elements in it. Like the head, heads of each list only we are populating into it, right? Each time, so that's why. And then next is we processing the each node. So each of the total N nodes in the K list will be inserted and removed from the priority queue exactly once. And then the insertion and removal operations are O of log K. So this is just like we maintain the order, right? For insertion and removal, just log K for, for the priority queue because it's the implementation of the heap. So for the N insertions and deletions, we get a total time complex of N log K. So space complexity, here the space complexity is gonna be O of K. Since at any point of time, the maximum number of elements in the priority queue doesn't exceed the number of lists, that is O of K. We are storing only one node from each of the k list any time, so it's always going to be O of k. So here, demo and conclusion. So I have got the code ready here. Let's submit this. So here, this accept resolution. So conclusion, this approach while simple to implement highlights the power of priority queue in handling sorted data. So by utilizing the Python's priority queue, we have managed to merge case order linked list into one with a clear and understandable code. This technique is very efficient and especially when we are dealing with a real world data processing tasks that require efficiency and simplicity. Key to master coding is just to practice and understanding the underlying data structures and algorithms. So keep coding and see you in the next challenge. 